What is up guys, this is Scope here, welcoming you back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Coliseum. So, in the last episode, we beat the game. That's what we did. We defeated uh, Cypherhead E. Vice, the fat lard of Poo Poo himself, and now Cypher is successfully stopped, but there are still more Shadow Pokemon to hunt out, and also, there is Mount Battle to take on, which is where we are now. So, we're gonna do that. And, um, you guys said that the format that I chose to go about Mount Battle worked sounds like it would work out pretty well so that's what we're gonna do um, essentially I'm going to uh, fast forward the first nine battles of a sector of a area each area consists of ten battles a whole total of ten each um, I'm gonna fast forward those nine battles and post commentate those you know just give you guys a little bit of insight on what was going on and maybe just vlog a little bit but I'm gonna keep recording right now live and I'm just not going to talk through the first nine battles, and what I'll do is then once I get to the tenth battle, I'll live commentate that, since the tenth battle in each area is the area leader, which is significantly harder than the rest of the area. So those battles will be a little bit exciting, but um, actually in the mountain battle for story mode, you can, uh, you can challenge this place multiple times and they get higher levels, but you only have to do it once for story purposes. And uh, these guys only start off at around levels 20. The first area leader, his Pokemon are only level 18 to 20. So um, things are going to be pretty easy for us for a bit. But the final guys end up being around level 60. So we will have some stuff going on. So how that battle works is basically there's this chick over here which you can exchange uh, coupons. Yeah, you don't have enough coupons for exchanging. So basically what's going to go on here... Yes, uh, these are the things you can buy with your prize money pretty much. Uh, you can buy all these, Choice Band, Raise Moves Power, uh, that's a good thing, Scope Lens, Critical Hit Rate, King's Rock, Cause Flinching, the Quick Claw, which is good, Focus Band, Leftover is really good, you, that's a good item, all these awesome berries, and then of course some TMs, uh, I believe TM29 is Psychic, that is Ice Beam, that's really good, I want. I kind of want Ice Beam, uh, that is Thunderbolt, um, Flamethrower, and... Uh, double team. So, yeah. Um, basically, you can exchange coupons for those. Now, how it's going to work is for each uh, area we defeat, we're going to get a set amount of Poke coupons. Oh, okay, guys, we're back. Sorry about that. I got the recording just stopped recording for some reason. I don't know why. Anyway, um, in the la like I was saying, when you defeat ten every ten trainers, uh, after you beat trainer 10, 20, 30, you know, the area leaders, you will come into a pit stop room that looks like this, a break room. And um, it's going to have a save point, an area where you can heal, and uh, also a lady with an Abra that can teleport you out. We'll talk about that. And then a Poke Coupon Exchange. The guy that's going to be running the heal machine will give you Poke Coupons, and then you can exchange them for stuff in the middle. Now, also, something that's great about Mount Battle is you don't have to commit to doing all these 100 battles right in a row if you don't want to. Every 10 area, every, every uh, 10 battles, you can actually talk to this lady in the Abra, and she will let you teleport out and go do other stuff in the world if you want. Switch your Pokemon, uh, you can go train Shadow Pokemon, you can do anything else, and then you can come back here and resume it at any time. So every 10 battles, you get a break. It's really cool. However, if you do lose a battle, you are sent back out and you don't get to restart. You have to start back over at battle number one. So um, the only thing that can kick you out, basically, is losing or quitting coming back and saying you want to leave, you know. It's not like you can go beat the first nine trainers in an area, walk back, and tell the lady you want to teleport out. That'll reset the area, and you're going to have to do those nine battles over again. So that's how Mount Battle is going to work. So basically, we're going to get started on it now. I'll fast forward these first nine battles, and I will see you guys at the first area leader, which is going to be Vander, if you, as you remember from uh, the Dekim segment. So I'll see you guys in just a little bit. What's up guys, this is Future Scope talking at the time that I'm editing this episode. So, we are going to go through the first nine battles of Mount Battle, and I have taken the liberty of muting the audio because every time I hear, I don't know about you guys, but every time I hear fast music like this, it makes me like want to talk really fast. Like when I was doing post-commentating the device failures, I heard the music, I had the music going, so it was like da -da 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 -da. so I felt like I had to like talk fast to keep up with it, and that's why I was talking so fast in those videos, but I've learned my lesson now, the video is muted, so there you go. Um, not much interesting to talk about about these first nine battles, this, this whole first video, which is we're going to take on three areas in these videos, just a uh, heads up, are really not that exciting because as you can see, the people are level 15, 16, they get up to, I think in this video, up to 25 is the final area leader. So they're just barely getting up to half of our levels at this point, so they're really cake. 
and um, with the exception of one Pokemon, every single Pokemon in this video we one hit KO. So um, sorry if that spoils anything, but not just that's just my excuse why we're probably not going to talk about the battle. So at this point, I'm just sending the Pokemon out in my team who are the lowest levels, even though experience you don't you get shit for experience here, but oh well. Anywho, up to uh. Let's talk about something else. Um, something I've been wanting to talk about is my future LPs. Um, a lot of people have been asking if I'm going to LP a Yu-Gi-Oh game or Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness after this LP. Um, and the answer to both of those is no. Because, yeah, I like LPing Yu-Gi-Oh games as much as the next guy. And hey, I think uh, doing a sequel right after this would be really cool too. But here's the thing. I have a lot of other sequels that I need to let's play before I get around to the sequel for this game because it just wouldn't be fair to the other games that I've played the first game of and haven't done the sequel. For example, I've LP'd Portal 1, but I have I've never LP'd Portal 2. And Portal 1 was one of my one of my one of my first let's plays. And I've really and Portal 2 is a really short game, so there's no reason I have to really put that off except that I haven't been in the mood, but I really need to get around to that. And also um, Mega Man Battle Network 6, Side Beast Gregar is an LP I've been thinking of doing. Of course, I've been putting it off because it requires a lot of practice because it's a really, really long game. And it's a pretty tough game, too. Harder than both of the other Mega Man Battle Networks that I've already LP'd. But those both will probably come first before XD Gale of Darkness. So that's just my itinerary about that. And a Yu-Gi-Oh game, honestly, I can't even really think of any of the Yu-Gi-Oh games I'd want to LP next. Like, Duelist of the Roses and Eternal... or Duelist of the Roses. Duelist of the Roses and uh, Forbidden Memories were really near and dear to my heart, but um, I can't really think of any of the Yu-Gi-Oh games that I was that into. But um, I have played other ones, and those will come into play in the future. I'm sure, like, uh, Eternal Duelist Soul. I've played World Championship 2006, I think it was. Um, GX Tag Force, the PSP one, is a really good one. I've played a few, you know. But, I don't know, so... Um, at that, hopefully that will calm down the discussions about XD Gale of Darkness or a Yu-Gi-Oh game. Maybe the next LP after the next one, but who knows for now. And then of course you've always got the voting LPs as a chance to uh, get one of those games in, so there you go. Anyway, I think we've only got, what, one more battle here? Yeah, battle number nine, so... F-U, 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 says the lady, funneled lady Angus. She's crazy, she really is. So anyways, that's going to be the end of this first post commentary, and now we are going to, after we kill fun old lady stuff and she says F you F you again, we're going to hand the video back over to Past Scope to Live Duel Vander. So, um, take it away Past Scope, right now. Alright guys, we are here, we've made it to battle number 10, area leader Vander, Vander Camp. The man who gave us our very first time flute is... Oh, hi, Scope. I'm waiting for you. Are you ready for serious training? Even though you saved me, a battle's a battle. Let's not waste any time. If you say so, buddy. Oh, man, there's going to be an echo because I have this... I have my TV volume turned up because I wanted to hear my music for the first, you know, nine battles. My bad. Anyway, um, the rest of these guys were chumps because they pretty much all had two Pokemon, but... Um, Vanderkamp's a little different. He's got five Pokemon. Usually, area leaders watch six, but uh, for a while, the regular trainers here are just gonna have um, just gonna have two Pokemon for quite a while, actually. So, like I've been doing the rest of this thing, we really don't need to worry about our attacks at this point. They're so much lower levels than us. They're over two and a half times lower than our level right now. So, pretty much any attack, as long as it affects them. You know, as long as you're not using normal type on a ghost type or something like that, or psychic on a dark type, it'll kill them. So, at this point, it's really mindless. As you can see, Little is finally about to grow to 50. The only thing that sucks is the experience we're getting in these early stages aren't isn't is pretty much negligible. So that sucks. It's gonna take a whole area just for us to grow, you know, a quarter of a level here. But so be it. Hey, there we go. Littlefoot finally grew to 50. Sweet. So uh, starting in the next area, I'm probably going to switch him out for Doom, who is the only other level 49 member still on our team besides Espeon. Yeah. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. It's it's mindless at this point. You don't even really have to pay attention at this point if you don't want to. 
But of course they make it like this so that you can come here earlier in the game and I think what they intend you to do is when you're around these the levels of these people, they intend for you to fight that area and then wait to wait to fight the next area until you're around those levels. I think that's what they intend for you to do. So it's kind of like a progressive thing in the game. And that's probably what I should have done. That probably would have been much more exciting and you know, to spread it a little thinner instead of just doing this all at once. But I don't know, it's kind of exciting to do this all at once, because Mount Battle, like, just the whole area is really cool. It's not all going to be mountainy looking like this. I mean, of course it is, because it's a mountain, but it's not all going to look this bland. They're, the areas are going to get a lot cooler looking, so it's kind of nice to experience it all at once and just see how everything changes around you. And Jiggly Schmack is dead. And that's Vander for you, folks. He's pretty weak sauce. How this guy got a time flute, I have no idea. Fantastic! That's what I said, buddy. Vanderkamp. I don't even know where that's from. You've cleared Area 1. Congratulations, you really are talented. Now, go on, someone will give you poke coupons in the break room. Hell yeah, so I guess I'll stay with you for this first break room. Just kind of showed off these little floating areas. Which apparently, this whole entire room, which looks a lot bigger on the inside, mind you, can be held up by four freaking propeller blades. Are you cereal? Anyway, so this is a room. It's manned by one single guy. Oh yes, you've cleared area one. Congratulations. Here are your poke coupons for surviving the knockout challenge. And we get a hundred poke coupons. Now for each area, you're gonna get a set amount of poke coupons. Uh, I'll just tell you now. For area two, you get two hundred. Area three, you get four hundred. Area four, you get six hundred. Area five, you get eight hundred. Area 6, you get 800. Area 7, you get... Ooh, doo, doo. Can't change the page there. 900. Area 8... Wait, what? Oh yeah, Area 8, you get 900. Area 9, you get 1,000. And Area 10, you get 1,200. So you'll have quite a few Poke Coupons by the end of this. Um, and the way you get more Poke Coupons is you just do the whole battle area again, really. So that's how that works. Would you like to go on to the next area? Um, yeah, I'll advance. I like your challenger spirit. Show them what you're made of. So you don't have to pick there. Basically, if you want to, uh, so you can save here, change your Pokemon around. I recommend saving at every area. Just in case by some fluke you end up losing in the area. Right before you're about to lose the battle. Because if you wait till after you lose the battle and then reset your game, the game's still going to remember that you lost. And it's going to start you somewhere else and you're going to be screwed. So what I recommend doing is saving before every area, and if you end up losing in that area, like by some fluke, as soon as you see yourself about to lose in the battle, reset your game, and you'll be reset here, you can try the area again, so... Just make sure you do it before you've actually lost the battle, and the game remembers that. Now, you could talk to this guy again and tell him to stop if you want, and stop the challenge, and you can leave, and then when you talk to the lady at the front of Mount Battle, tell her you want to continue a challenge, and you can just come, and you'll, they'll send you, warp you right back over here, so... That's that, uh, but for now we're going to continue the challenge, so let's go do Area 2. What's up guys, it is Future Scope again. We are here, about to do battles, what is this, uh, 11 through 19? Yeah, once again, nothing too exciting, F-A, F-A, F-A says this old lady. But once again, nothing too exciting here, it's pretty much the same story as the first nine battles. Um, we're still one hit KOing everybody, they're a little bit higher level. We've still got first evolution Pokemon here, so... Nothing too drastic to talk about, so uh, let's just start talking about other stuff again. Today, I'm going to actually go buy, like, I think right after I edit this, too, I want to go buy New Super Mario Bros. 2 and uh, play it. I mean, I'm not, like, a super big fan of the whole theme they're going with, like, collecting all the coins, you know? Like, you got to collect a million coins, and that's the whole theme of the game, but, you know, it looks fun, and I want to play it, and it looks like, you know, a fun game to play while you're taking a crap, which is... I mean that's not generally what I look for in a game, but it's 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 I'll I'll be honest, it's it's a good portion of what I look for in a game that's portable, you know, like I was like, okay, can I play this while I'm taking a deuce, you know, will it be fun? And you know, that's why I play Plants vs. Zombies on my iPhone, shit. And you know, Ocarina of Time on the three DS I got more because it's Ocarina of Time, you know, it's freaking awesome and I would play that thing all the time, but Mario is like the perfect game to play while you're taking a dump, you know, because the levels aren't too long, you can just save in between each level, you know, you don't need to have, you don't need to feel yourself back in on the story, you just play it. That's why I love Mario games. You know, I need to LP a Mario game, I haven't LP'd a Mario game myself in a long time, like I've done a lot of co-ops with Mario games. Pretty much every co-op I've done has been a Mario game, have you guys noticed that? 
first co-op Super Mario 64 with Argon, second co-op with Argon Super Mario Galaxy, um, Super Smash Bros. Brawl with 50 First Crashes, it's essentially a Mario game, it's got Mario in it, and then fucking uh, Super Mario World with Dave. Every co-op I've done has been a Mario game, that is crazy. And then of course myself, I've done, I've LP'd Super Mario Sunshine and Super Mario Galaxy 2. I think that's all the ones I've done. Oh, I did a Board Chronicles on the original Super Mario Bros. But other than that, I haven't done any. So I think, I don't know, maybe I should, maybe it's time I do a Super Mario game. A regular LP now again. But once again, my play is just so full. Like, my list of future LPs is so huge now. Like, ones I gotta do next, I just don't know. You know? And that's kind of why I do the voting thing, because I don't really... It's too big of a decision to make on my own, so I'm like, ah, I don't know might be best to just uh, pass that off to you guys, which is why I do that. But um, for 10,000 subs, the reason I just picked Final Fantasy VIII myself is because I really wanted to just do that one. And Final Fantasy VIII, I don't know why, it's been in like three previous votes, three previous rounds of voting, like whole separate entities, and nobody's, it's never won. I don't even know if it's ever gotten that far, really, but yeah, you guys have just never voted for it, so I guess I should have taken that as a sign that you guys probably didn't want to see that LP and not done it, but hey, it's, you know, it's like my second favorite game of all time. I gotta LP it, you know? And I just felt like the time was right. I was feeling it. I was feeling tit. So, that's my MO on Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, just LPs deciding is just so tough. But I'll be honest with you, the toughest part of LPs isn't anything like that. It's the toughest part of LPs is coming up with titles for videos. That's what I'll. That's what I'm gonna stick with as the hardest part. Definitely, it's it's tough. You know, you gotta be clever, you gotta be witty, and you gotta be cool, and that's hard. But anyway, looks like we finished up these rounds of battle. So now I'm gonna pass it back off to Pasco. Take it away, Pasco. All right, guys, we are back, and it's time for battle number twenty. This is uh some weird looking guy. Yahoo! I'm Arth. I'm genuine. I'm genius area leader. Very you too. That's me, Arth. Okay, let's see if you can go gone or not. Battle, battle! Alright, so it's Arth. Area leader Arth. He's pretty chunky. Look at those hands. Oh my god, those are way too big. Um, this guy's a little bit higher level than Vander, but still, ultimately, not too much. Uh, they're around level 25, so he's about half of our level still. So, still, it really doesn't matter who you send out. Maybe next area leader will have to start worrying about it. <laughs> but as for now, not too much. Um, plus, right now, the area leaders are still using unitype teams for the most part, so, like, if you could, if this guy uses mostly grass types, so if you just send out a fire type, you will, uh, pretty much kill his whole team, so, there you go. Um, once we get to, like, I think area 6, they're gonna start, you know, maybe area 5, they're gonna start using, um, I think it's area 6, they start using, uh, more diverse teams, so... Then we're going to have to start thinking about tight matching maybe at that point, but uh, as for now, we're pretty much just coast through up to probably Area 4. Then Area 5 is where shit's going to start getting real, but as for now, like I said, pretty much anything works at our levels. But um, we're still going to have quite a bit of trouble with the later ones, trust me. Believe me. But as for now, Arth is still a pansy ass. I do like I do like how they gave all the area leaders though unique sprites. Like nobody else has the sprites of the uh, of the area leaders in this game, which is pretty cool. So you know they made them like special bosses, I guess, with their own sprites. So it's cool. It's it's nice that they put that effort into it at least. I really don't know where we're at on time because I don't know how much I'm gonna have to fast forward of the um, original crap. But, you know, um, we're probably just in the episode here. I guess I'll just do two areas per video. Uh, so this will only take five videos. That won't be so bad. I'm thinking I can get three out of the way in this one, but maybe I could get three, and then I'll do two per video, which would leave me finishing area nine, like in four videos. Or no, wait, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, no, in four videos, and then the fifth video could be um, just all area ten, final area. Huh? That's an idea. I suppose we could do that, yeah. Because I feel like we have more time here than I'm letting on. I feel like this is gonna be a super short video if I end it here. 
And that way it'll give us a lot more time to spend on area 10 since that's obviously going to take longer with the uh, final battle and all. Hey, hey, the chicken's a little 51, what do you know? Pretty sweet. Bop, up, And that takes care of our... Yeah! Wow, that was a unique... Uh, he kind of looks like Garth from Wayne's World too, like just just the way he dresses and stuff. I don't know. I haven't battled this hard for a long time. Oh, it was fun, all right. Go get your Pokey coupons in the break room. What kind of a thing is that to say? Get your Pokey coupons in the break room. Anyway, that's it for Area Two. We are now going to get our Pokey coupons and enter Area Three. So let's get our Pokey coupons. Two hundred. Now I got a total of three hundred. And remember, you can't buy anything until uh stop the challenge. You actually can. You can just, uh, you can, um, what is it? Just take a break, you know, and then go by and start your challenge over. So, I'm gonna save here, and we will start Area 3, and that'll, after we beat that, that'll be the end of this video. So, let's get to it, baby. What's up, guys? It is Futurescope again, and we are here for the final post-commentary for this video. Uh, we're going to be taking on battles 21 through 29, and yes, even now, same story as the last. Um, not until battle 29, when we fight a Mawile, do I start not one-hit KOing people, and that's just because I was being stupid because he's Steel-type, but even him, he'll go down in two hits, so once again, nothing to talk about here battle-wise, so I think I'll just continue my thoughts for the last uh, segment we were talking about, which was titles. Titles for a video. If, yeah, well, you know what? That isn't even the hardest. It is the hardest part. But you know what? Something I don't recommend anybody start. Like, I know that everybody now has the thumbnail making option, not just partners. So I suppose this is a good time to give out advice about that. I loved the thumbnail feature, and I had a bunch of fun with it, you know, and I was making my own thumbnails. But, and I knew, I sh I'd known this from the beginning, but I didn't really, like, heed my advice. I'm like, no, nah, I'll stick with it. It's a tough thing to stick with because especially when you're not used to it where you just pick a thumbnail and it's not that much work before whereas now you gotta to make a thumbnail for a video it takes it takes like two to five minutes just depending if you're a person who just uses the same template you know like the same picture every episode and just changes the number on it then yeah it's not gonna take very long it's gonna take 30 seconds but that's kind of boring and to people who do that I don't know um, it's just, I mean, it's not lazy, and it's cool. I guess it gives you some sort of continuity, but it's its honestly pretty lazy, and it's not really that exciting. It doesn't make people excited to see your thumbnail, so why are you even using the custom thumbnail if that's all you're going to do anyway? Because people like to see, I guarantee you, people would enjoy seeing just whatever random thumbnail will come up instead of just the random, oh, hey, this is number eight of this video or whatever. So, you know, I would recommend against that, but if you're going to make your own custom thumbnails and do like different shit in every thumbnail that like applies to the episode or what happened in the episode, which is what I was doing with this LP actually, um, it's hard to keep up with because it takes a lot of work. You've got to think of the stuff that you want to put on the thumbnail, which is the hardest part, and then you've got to find the stuff online, and then you got to you know stick it in Photoshop or Paint or whatever you're using. You got to put it together, you got to save it, and then you got to upload it, and that's for every single episode. And if you're you know a daily uploader like me, where you know you update quite regularly. You could fall behind. As you can see, the last thumbnail I made for this LP was episode 24, and we're over double the ways past that now, so it's... I really need to catch up. So for future LPs like Final Fantasy VIII, I just decided, you know what? I'm just going to let the chips fall where they may and just pick out of the regular thumbnails, you know? Every once in a while, I'll do a cool thumbnail. Like for episode 3, I, f I thought doing Ifrit and Shiva would be a cool thumbnail, but, you know, every once in a while, when I feel the urge, I'll do it. But other than that, I'm not going to, like put numbers and titles in the thumbnail because then it just takes then you're pretty much saying dedicating yourself that it's going to be you know you're going to have to do it for every episode especially for long LPs it's just like eh I am going to eventually finish this one and uh, finish the thumbnails I just need some time to sit down and catch up and do it for this LP because I've already started it so there's no point in going back now of course I just could go and change all the thumbnails back to old ones I guess but then all the work I put into the new thumbnails would basically be wasted time and in this life you can't afford to waste time so I guess I better just go all the way through with it and you know ride it out to the end but as for future thumbnails I don't know how far I'm gonna be willing to go for that it's a lot of work it really is but um, I don't know if I feel the urge I think I'll do it in some LPs some LPs I won't probably the shorter LPs I'll do it but anyway uh, back to the action here, where this is Battle 29, and that's the Maw Wow that I didn't kill in one hit, because I used Body Slam like a dumbass, and of course that didn't kill him, because he's Steel-type, but 
that's going to be it. Now we're going to be at Battle 30, the final battle in this episode. So I will see you guys next time. And once again, here's past scope. All right, guys, we are back yet again. It's time for Area Leader 3, Battle Number 30. Let's do it. Welcome, I'm Renson. I'll be providing the finishing touch to Area 3. Hello, Renson. Hey, how you doing? She's pretty cute, I'll admit. Anyway, she runs, uh, much like Misty, a full water type team up in here, so bring out your Chicken J or your other electric type and you'll pretty much sweep her. Um, the Pokemon in this area are just barely reaching a level 30, with only two of her Pokemon being level 30, so they are still about 20 levels behind us, so um, it's still very easy. You can still pretty much one-hit KO anybody with anything, almost, just about. A few Pokemon you can't, as you saw in that last battle with Mawile, but, um, you know. Anyway, still nothing too big to worry about, and, you know, um, every battle here you get healed your PP and your HP, so um, there's really no reason you should be losing at this point if you're doing it at the same point in the game that I am. So it's still pretty much easy money at this point, even though we're not getting any money. That's the sad thing, is you don't get any money from this place. Skarmory, the bakery, the Skarmory is about to reach level 51 there, that's pretty sweet. Pretty much just my methodology for the Pokemon I'm sending in are just the Pokemon that need the levels. Um, you know, as soon as each Pokemon grows a level 51, I switch into another level 50. And once they all reach 51, then whoever needs the least experience to 52, I put them in front. And then, you know, because at this point, type matching doesn't matter, so I might as well distribute the levels as evenly as possible. But um, probably the area after the next one, or maybe even the next one, we'll have to start type matching pretty soon here. I have to actually start thinking about who we're sending out in front. And of course, this chick has five Pokemon, like all the area leaders up to this point. Boom. Just make sure you uh, don't spam your buttons at this point. Just, you know, attack each de separate Pokemon that's in the arena. That way, they don't get off any attacks against you. The only Pokemon that are... Well, of course, then of course they can always get off quick attacks, but... Three damage, I mean, come on. And then you get healed the next battle, and you're missing. What are you gonna do? And there you go, that's Renson. Too bad I, I would have liked to watch her for longer, see the battle for longer go on, but... Alas, you know, we're bosses, so that's what we do, we just kick ass. Oh, Skarmory already grew to 51, I didn't even... When did that happen? I missed it. Do oh, I missed. That's magnificent! Well, don't cry. Jeez, she has huge feet. Lord. It makes sense. After all, you were good enough to reach here. Go on to the break room and get some Poke Coupons. <laughs> really? You think I don't know how to get Poke Coupons at this point? Oh, so this is exciting because uh, after this, the terrain actually turns into something different. You can see we're actually, this break room heads into the mountains, so uh, there might be some different scenery on the other side where things really start to get exciting. So, we're going to head into the break room, and in the next episode of Pokemon Coliseum, we will take on Area 4 and 5, Battles 31 through 50. After the next episode, we'll already be halfway up Mount Battle. So, I will see you guys then. Let's collect our Poke Coupons first. We get a dazzling 400 Poke Coupons. Alright, so I will see you guys next time on Pokemon Coliseum. Peace out!